Just like plants, animals are also an integral part of our ecosystem. So they have some special characteristics which help them to participate in balancing the ecosystem and also help them to perceive the world around us. So have you ever wondered that how we all get connect with the outer world? And what makes animals an integral part of our ecosystem? All is going to clear in the next couple of minutes. This is Aditi Gupta and here is the world of animals. Animals have such some bunch of organs, special organs that helps them to connect or understand the environment around them or around us. So these organs are known as sense organs. So sense organs, if we'll define uh, the sense organ in one go, then sense organs are such organs which helps us to connect or organize to through uh, the outside world so these organs connect organs to the outside world means it helps us to perceive the whole world which is existing around us so just have a look here we uh, it is showing different uh, kinds of organs here about fish snake birds and for frog these all organisms have different different sense organs which helps them to connect the uh, the to the outside world so if we'll start with the let's begin with the fish okay so have a close look of this picture it it is showing all the organ organs of um, through which the fish is able to connect with the outside world so fish uh, most of the fish have good eyesight really have a good eyesight and a sense of taste okay so here the eyes which helps them to connect uh, which helps uh, fish to see under the water okay and they also have uh, you have you can see that here is a lateral line these lines are a row of special cells along along the skin okay so it is having it is it is a row of a special cells where, which helps them to uh, sense the vibrations okay so this these lateral lines are helping the fish to sense the vibrations which is uh, occurring inside the water and through this vibrations they uh, get aware about the danger around themselves or uh, any kind of and also they can uh, get aware the the availability of the food around themselves okay so this is uh, these are the main organs which helps them to uh, sense the things around them okay so next if we'll talk about frog means frog is what amphibian okay so frog frog generally uh, have really large eyes okay so frog have really you can see here that frogs have really large eyes and these eyes uh, through which they can able to see without any movement without uh, moving their heads around on the sideways they can even see the things behind themselves okay so this is how they perceive and most of the sensory organs of uh, frogs are on their head okay generally uh, all the uh, sense organs are generally on the head and they also feels the vibration through the water fine next comes to the snake uh, now snakes really have poor eyesight okay so uh, snakes generally can't see or they hardly see they have a really poor eyesight so what they have as a sense organ this tongue okay so they have a forked tongue to smell okay this is the important point that the tongue here is helping snake to smell the trap and they track their prey with the help of these tongues and smell their surroundings with the help of this tongue okay and now it will it comes to the birds birds really have a better eyesight than human beings okay so they are having a better eyesight from us even also so this this is how they can able to find the food easily from uh, the far even far uh, from the far place also and they get aware about the dangers fine and we have an example here hawk that really have a very sharp this is hawk and it is really having a very sharp vision fine now it comes to the mammals mammals are always different from every uh, person we do have uh, we also comes in a mammals uh, and 
humans uh, if we'll talk about the mammals uh, human category of the mammals then humans are having five sense organs in their body so, okay so this all the five organs are clearly here eyes skin tongue ear and nose so what eyes help us to see nose help us to smell or breathe also ear help us to hear thus whatever the things and ear also maintain the balance of our body the uh, uh, with the help of our ear only we are able humans are able to stand in the, on the two legs okay and we have tongue to uh, have the taste of something and also speak fine and lastly we have a sense organ skin that help us to feel so uh, broadly if we'll talk about then say uh, due to eyes we generally see ear help us to maintain the balance and hear now tongue is having taste but tiny taste buds in it okay so tongue is having tiny sensory structures that is called taste bud just have a look here that shows the all the taste we have majorly four taste that is bitter sour sweet and salty okay so we have four major taste and this is how it is it is uh, distributed among our tongue okay mm, uh, what is this showing here that we uh, we can get the taste of a bitter bitter taste here we can get so taste here we can get sweet taste here and we can get a maximum amount of salty taste here okay so this is how our tongue having a taste buds of all these four sin uh, taste okay now we really have a next uh, uh, important process that process is reproduction now what is reproduction reproduction is a process by which living things produce offsprings to continue their species and what are these offsprings means offspring offsprings means the copied baby of their uh, species to continue their species so that their species doesn't get vanished fine so here also fish fish and uh, we all categories uh, Uh, reproduce in the different different ways so uh, we have a different process we have a different procedure of reproduction different organism so if we'll talk about fish the fish generally lays eggs inside the water okay and uh, you can see here the whole life cycle of fish is showing here that shows that it lays eggs and what is that uh, important thing is that fish lays eggs in the uh, thousand numbers of uh, uh, eggs they lay why why they are laying in a uh, bunch of uh, number because sometimes some of the eggs or baby fishes has been hatches out are eaten by other fishes okay so just uh, to save few of the uh, at least few of the uh, babies can get saved so that the uh, large number of eggs they are going to give okay similarly amphibians amphibians also lays eggs and eggs hatch uh, here eggs hatch to give birth to the baby frog okay so just have a look of this life cycle also here the baby frog the eggs are laying by the and that is going to turn into the baby frog that is called tadpoles okay so this these tadpoles generally lives inside the water till they grow into the frog and then they comes out to the water and then go to the land that is how the amphibians work okay and next reptiles reptiles do also lays eggs on land fine so what reptiles do they generally burrows their eggs inside the sand or a land okay and cover up with the soil after the eggs gets hatch then mother what generally what they do then mother picks the their babies uh, in the her mouth and carries them to the water fine this is how reptiles reproduce okay now here we have the life cycle of birds birds generally lays their eggs into the nest 
and then the mother bird keeps them warm what they do is mother hatches the eggs generally and keeps them warm with their uh, with the warmth of their body uh, Uh, the mother bird generally sit on the egg and keep it warm until the young hatch and the baby comes out from the egg okay so this is how the birds come into the world and birds reproduce the last uh, are mammals mammals are uh, generally do not lay eggs okay so th- this makes the mammal different from other categories and they generally do not lay eggs instead of that they generally gives birth to their young ones what they do is they they give to, uh, birth to their young ones and mother of uh, uh, mammals produces milk to feed the baby okay you the two life cycles are here one is of tiger uh, here also you can see that baby tiger is sitting here and then it is turning to the uh, uh, adult one adult tiger and then adult tiger is having more babies so this is how this life cycle works and similarly we are humans are humans are also mammals so humans generally starts taking birth uh, just like here before the birth we are uh, in the form of egg or sperm that turns into the baby then baby turns into the child and then child turns into the young person or we get adolescent ages and then we get adult and again we produces eggs okay so this is how the whole life cycle of mammals work we generally do not lay eggs and you can see here that we are giving the birth of our young ones so here the mother produces milk and this is how we feed and we take care of generally mammals take care of their babies until and unless they are not capable to take care of ourselves fine uh, now we all have ex- uh, there are some exceptions which exist in every category similarly here also we have duck billed platypus and spiny antier antitrur which lays eggs okay so this uh, they these are two anim these, these are two mammals which lays eggs and uh, their young ones hatch from the eggs and here is the summary of all things and which shows the all categories in when one go that how the fishes live move eat how the fishes live move eat breathe or lay eggs similarly amphibians how the lifestyle of um, amphibians and what makes the reptiles different from other category and uh, here the birds and mammals so this whole flow charts you can give up preview of all the things in uh, just a single uh, example in the single way so that's all we come up with the facts which shows that how we all gets connect to the outer world and what makes uh, us as an integral part of the ecosystem how we are participating in balancing the ecosystem by the process of reproduction and all so this is so we you sh- uh, people have to be very clear with all the concepts and that you should be very crystal clear with all your concepts